How's it going everybody and welcome back to another episode of Project Time Tech. My workbench is an absolute disaster and I'm a glutton for punishment, evidently. You see, I have a, um, I have a Dodge truck. It's a 1994 Dodge Ram uh, truck that I've had since, about since 1997. So thing has a long history with me and um, I've recently on my primary YouTube channel Project Time Garage, which I'll have to link up here if you haven't checked that channel out. Go check. Actually, I'm going to link it up here. Go check it out. On that channel, I've been kind of working on that truck and getting it back to the way I want it to be. And one of those things includes moving the factory or going back to the factory original sound system in the truck. See, I had this thing all through my late teens and early 20s, and I put every stereo system known to man in that thing at some point. And what I didn't realize, I guess, at the time was the factory Infinity sound system that that particular truck came with was pretty darn good. Uh, even maybe by today's standard, it's pretty good. Thing is, finding and sourcing all those original components for the truck that still work um, is, a, is a chore. Uh, it's, it's pretty tough to do. And here's why. The head unit that these came with from the factory um, are different than the rest and they're really prone to problems um, particularly in the uh, in the tuner portion and in the cassette deck operation uh, it's hard to find one that works and when you do find one that works it's usually been refurbished and they want you know 400 500 bucks I saw some that are up to six hundred dollars uh, one that had Bluetooth built into it and all that I'm not really concerned with that what I am concerned with is getting this, which is the factory deck. And if you notice, I have several factory decks back there. Uh, a couple of them Infinities. One of them looks to be an Infinity, but it doesn't actually have the Infinity logo on it. Look, it's, it's identical, um, but not the same. So I've tried to scavenge and move parts around and get a good working deck. And I've gotten pretty close, but I ran across this one that already did work and everything checks out on it. Uh, looks to be a fairly low mile unit. So I've got this. The other thing that I had to source and work on are the speakers. Um, the speakers are completely different than anything you've probably ever even seen before. For example, these are the front door speakers. And if you look at the back of them, they have this amplifier built into them and we use uh, plus 12 volts in ground to run the amplifier and uh, obviously we have two, two center leads that go to the speaker itself, but they're self-amplified. So uh, in the dash there is a, called a radio choke, which is basically just a transformer and noise filter that actually sends power out to all these speakers or all the amplifiers for these speakers. So as a result, they sound pretty darn good. Now, I was able to find tons of these 6x9 speakers. These would be the ones that go in the doors. But I have had no luck finding amplified, um, I believe these are 6.5 inch speakers. Uh, but you see, these, these are Chrysler Infinity, but these are from, I believe, a later model of vehicle. At some point, Chrysler... Um, changed from having self-amplified speakers to having an amplifier mounted somewhere else in the vehicle that, that ran these. Again, I can't find any of this size speaker that has the amplifier on them. I've scoured the ends of the earth. I'm not really sure what vehicles came with the round ones. Most of your minivans, uh, particularly the town and country Chrysler vans, had the Infinity sound system, but all of the speakers were ovals. They, they were either, I think, uh, four by sixes or six by nines. So can't really find any round ones. Um, if anybody out there is watching this knows where I can find a set of these, uh, I'd really appreciate it. Um, I even went so far as to find the factory tweeters that go up in the front of the doors, all Chrysler Infinity. These are, uh, these are NOS, these have never been installed. So that was a score and they were cheap. I think I gave like 30 bucks for the pair of them or something like that. So the goal of, of the operation here today is to, I'm gonna to show you 
everything that I went through in order to get these speakers done. You see the tinsel leads on the speakers were all junky and um, I had to redo a lot of those. Amplifiers needed a little bit of help on, on one of these speakers. But anyway, we're gonna go through getting the speakers put back together and get them up and going. Um, and also, I want to be able to use my iPod or not really my iPod, it just, I happen to have it here, but I really want to be able to use my phone um, to plug up to this radio and be able to listen to like Sirius XM or Spotify or something like that. And I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna convert this radio um, over uh, using the factory den plug that's on the back of the radio. Um, I'm gonna have a complete separate video on um, adding the aux cord to this because it's a little more in depth. Um, in fact, I'm going to link that video right up here somewhere. Uh, so if you want to go and check out the entirety of that video, go do that. Uh, but for the purpose of today, we'll, uh, you know, we'll have our iPod playing music and get this thing completely up and going. Um, so that's the goal. Repair everything, make it all work, make sure our aux cord is happy and get everything ready to install in the truck. Now, um, I'm not going to install the radio in the truck in this episode because this is going to be a pretty long episode, I think, uh, a lot of techie, geeky soldering and stuff. But uh, what I will do is I will put a link, again, up here to the original or to the installation uh, of this. I'm going to do this on my primary channel, Project Time Garage. I have, uh, I have way more subscribers over there and it's right down the automotive alley of what I do over there. So. Um, thing is, what I'm about to do here today is just a little more technical than I think most of my viewing audience would care about. So uh, I'm going to shut up now and stop talking and let's get to repairing these speakers and we'll kind of go through some of this uh, as we go. So let's get busy. This is an example of one of the Infinity speakers that came out of these vehicles and they have this amplifier on the back of them. Now these are the speakers that live in the front doors. Uh, I believe they're six by nines. And these are the speakers that live in the back doors. And um, while these are Infinity speakers, they don't have the amplifier on the back of them, as you can see. I have yet to be able to locate a pair of, of round speakers, I believe these are six and a halfs, that have the amplifier on them. Um, everyone that I found in a junkyard has already been missing, but I know they exist because I have them. Getting back to the root of the problem, these speakers. I don't know if the amplifier works or not, um, and I'm not going to break it apart until I have a reason to. But what I need to do is, is be able to wire it up and see if they work, but we have another problem to take care of before that happens. So on speakers, these uh, soldered connections here, on the bottom they come out to tensile leads that actually go up through the paper cone of the speaker and into the voice coil. And well, as you can see, see there's corrosion on the end of that. It, they have corroded off. And uh, both of them are the same way. And also these speakers have a tweeter in the middle of them here that are also going to be problematic too. So I'm going to start off by trying to get this uh, this paper pulled off here while doing as little damage as I possibly can with it. But it's going to be tough because this stuff really, really, really wants to tear. And there are the, uh, there are the connections for the tweeter, but you can see these things, this one's actually, well, no, they're all broken off as well. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to replace this tensile lead here uh, for the tweeter and for the, uh, the main part of the woofer. And to do this, I have a roll of speaker tensile lead. Uh, found this stuff on, I think I found it on Amazon. In fact, I'll, uh, I'll leave an Amazon link below where you can find this stuff. Basically, the, the gist of it is going to be that we're going to have to pick out and clean out all of the all of the crusty stuff in here and rethread that that um, tinsel lead through there. Now, 
I'm going to go ahead, probably I'm going to regret this, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pop this, um, this plastic piece off here just so I can work a little e more easily with it. Thing is, this thing is glued down. It's also going to be glued down to the, uh, to the speaker cone itself or to the paper, I guess, or the surround. So we definitely don't want to pick up that surround and break it. There we go. Which is exactly what I appear to be doing. So I'll need to make sure that I glue this back down where it popped up. And what I'm using to do this is this uh, Gorilla Glue Clear Grip. It's kind of a flexible, kind of a, kind of a gooey, bond but it works very well i had to get this off of here because i have to be able to chip away at all of this this um old epoxy here and get to the original um contact points because we have some super tiny little wires that run from here all the way into the voice coil so i need to be able to um i need to be able to access those and I need to be able to poke a little hole through here to rerun my tensile lead and also dig out all of the old stuff. And there's our hole right there. Now I have to put some glasses on because, well, I'm getting old. And... So what we got going on here is this wire it has green crusty stuff growing all the way down it. So the only thing I'm going to be able to do here is dig out what I can and see if I can, um, you know, have enough to connect to. It, it may be it may be bad all the way down to the voice uh, coil, and if that's the case, the speaker will have some problems. I don't want to try to scrape all this stuff off of here because I don't want to do damage to the voice coil or to the voice cone, even though it's plastic and probably going to hold up pretty well. But... <clears throat> and I'll come back and see if I can find this one as well. This one doesn't appear to be so crusty. There it is right there. Right there. Okay. So the object of the game is to push this through here. I'm just going to thread it all the way through. Now I'm sure that there's going to be some audiophile people who are going to tell me not to do what I'm about to do, but about my only choice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tin the end of this, just basically get some solder on there and get it wicked on there. And I'm going to tin this and I'm going to try and get this thing to lay down flat um, on, on this little wire, gently, gently, gently. And, um, you know, th at that point I'll try to get it laid down and get it epoxy back on there. Also, I think probably while my solder iron is heating up, let's check to make sure that we even have continuity between this and this. Because I see some more crusty stuff right here, and that could indicate that this wire is broken here. I don't know what I should have as far as uh, 
as an ohm reading goes, but we'll start at about 200 and see where we're at. We'll just go right here and right here. Right now that is showing open. Okay, so that's showing open and that's not good. Look, that one just broke again right there. Most likely, this wire has a break right here where this green crusty junk is. And it's probably meaning that I'm going to have to come on down and get a hold of it closer to, well, no, closer to the voice coil. But. Oh, I'm on. Let's go to 2K. No, I have nothing at all. This voice call is completely and totally open. Well, do we have a bad speaker? No, that's broke right there. There's one little green crusty spot right there. It was broke. Oh, okay. As of right there, I have continuity. So I have a tiny little green crusty spot right here. And everywhere below this appears to be viable. So that means I need to go through here and cut a lot of this stuff here back out and clean it up so that I can basically build myself a little trench in order to put my new wire back in here with all without destroying the speaker there we go and there's the wire that I'm dealing with pretty tiny <clears throat> I'm just going to make a like a little trench here, like I was saying, for for the new wire to lay in. And I need to kind of clean up a little bit more around this, too, because I need to get just a little bit more wire out of there, like that. Okay. Well, let's see what happens. Or if that just burned away. That's way too much. game here is going to be to make these stick together perfectly. And this little tiny wire is just not taking, it's not taking heat at all, or not taking solder at all.
Okay, that got it right there. Now, I don't know how sturdy it is, but at least it got it basically there. So what I'll do at this point is I'm going to take some epoxy or some of this glue and pop over it. This stuff is nice and lightweight and it's fairly close to what you know to what we had on there before it looks like. Okay. Hopefully that will suspend it enough that it'll be good. Now for this one. I think for this one, I'm going to try to bend a small loop in the end of it. And we'll see if that makes it a little bit easier to connect. Over on this side, I'm just going to pull out a decent length of this and I'll cut it on the back. Looks like it's going to go to about right there somewhere. Cut it about there. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Feed it through there. Until it goes roughly where I want it. Something like this. And I'll just go down here and figure out roughly where it needs to be. I want it to be a little bit long as opposed to a little bit short for sure. We'll get, we'll get this one tanned a little bit. And see if I can tend this one without destroying it. All right. Now. Wish me luck. All right. That one appears to be reasonably well in there as well. Okay. Before we get too silly here. Let's go ahead and the idea is going to be to kind of embed the wire in this stuff. We don't want it to to come off, but we also don't want it to rattle around either. I realize this may be a little overkill, but <laughs> what are you going to do? 
There's speakers that you can't buy anymore. That's got that part pretty well taken care of. At this point, what I'm gonna do is flip around here, grab my meter again, Make sure we've got continuity on the two uh, the two leads we just ran, which were these two. Make actually make sure that we've got an ohms reading, because without that we don't have a a good repair. And we do. Look at that. All right. So we've got a reading on that. Cross your fingers, this may happen. So we can open up the hole here a little bit. There we go. All right. At this point, we've got the two holes where these go through. Let's take a pair of tweezers and try to set them through. Don't want to pull them too tight either. We're going to leave some slack. See, that, that connector is in the way. Have my precision working here. There we go. Something like that. There's that voice coil at least hooked up. And no, I'm not using the right tool to cut these. I don't know what happened to my to my cutters. They have disappeared. Nice. Now Next thing we are going to have to do is get, and I hope hopefully you can see what's going on here. I'm not sure if you can or not, but let's try that. I'm going to get these two tensile leads off of here. Go ahead and get those unsoldered. Get these connecting points cleaned up. And this one is not as tough to deal with. Um, I mean, yeah, it's got, you know, it's got green crusty stuff and it's, it's um, a little bit ratty. But the cool thing is we don't have these tiny leads to have to try to solder to. This is a little more forgiving. I just need to pick out all of the old, all the old stuff here and find my hole that goes through the speaker and there it is right there so there are my two holes <clears throat> I'm going to take one of these and stick it through here all the way to the other side go ahead and flop the speaker over Pull it out and go ahead and let's see which which one did I take? Okay, this side. I'm gonna try to not waste quite so much of it this time. There's 
that one. Leave ourselves enough slack to be able to hook up our new tweeter or our old tweeter, something like that, because the tweeter is going to lay up here like this. And um, <laughs> what we'll do is we'll pull this thing back and basically we're just going to solder right back on this connection right here. So um, that's that's what I'm working toward. this one down oh look it was trying to go right to its little home how cute Push it through about that much and solder it down. And we'll cut this in about the same place, roughly. Now I want to go ahead and address where this uh, where this surround tried to tried to come up. I want to go ahead and we'll glue that back down. This rubber cement works so well for that. Because it stays flexible. What? It's not made for fingers for sure. So I'll use sharp metal tweezers for it. Also, what we'll do is um, I'm going to go ahead and put some of this around um, where these protrude. And I'm going to pull these wires back just the slightest little bitty bit, just to give the uh, just to give the you know the, the cone enough room to or the the yeah the cone enough room to move around here. And finally, we'll go ahead and run through some of this right here. done we should be able to smash this back on here and it should stay pretty well I'll go ahead and pull off the the old tinsel leads both of them And they were important to mention those were through some holes. So we need to get this all cleaned up. All right, clean this one out. All right, same process as with the other one. We'll just try to twist it around here and pop it in the back of this hole best we can. If we can hold it tight long enough. There. A 
there. And I think I'm gonna pull these through a little bit and just go ahead and cut them off now. Rather than trying to cut them after I've soldered them. Like that. All right. Get back in there, get back in there. All right, <clears throat> hopefully with any kind of luck, that is a relatively repaired speaker. I'm gonna go ahead and sit it on its face like this so that I'm putting pressure on the, you know, the repair I just made. <clears throat> Let's have a look again at our at our homage. See what we got going on. Yes. No. <clears throat> well, I probably should have checked this a second ago, but I don't have any, I don't have any, any, um, any reading on this tweeter, so it may not be any good. Yeah, I have nothing, nothing at all on it. Open loop. Unless it's got very, very high. No, I have nothing. 20 mega ohm maybe. No, I have nothing on that. Okay, I don't know. Um, I do do. I do know though that there's a capacitor on this. I don't know if that would interfere with my reading on it or not. I guess what I'll have to do is just try it out. That's the only thing to do at this point. Let me go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and repair the other one as well, the other six by nine, and we'll jump back and see where we're at with it. So this is the other speaker that was repaired here. And um, I'm just curious of what we got going on here. That voice coil actually is not open. What do we get on the voice coil going to the Twitter? Same thing. Okay. Well, either both tweeters are bad or the capacitor that's in line there is preventing me from getting a reading, which could be. I'm not a mathematician, I couldn't tell you. All right, I guess the thing to do next is um, let's see let's see if these work or to what extent they work now. Um, as far as wiring them up goes, it's pretty simple. Um, you've got wires on the outside that are 12 volt power and ground. And then you got power or you got leads on the inside that are your actually uh, speaker inputs uh, plus and minus. So I've, um, I've gone ahead and hooked up the power and ground and the speaker inputs and I've got it uh, set to the left rear uh, output. I don't have any other outputs hooked up on the radio at this point. And it does, it actually does come on and work. Um, it's got tons and tons of bass. I mean like, like Tons and tons of bass. Um, in fact, the bass has turned way back. I'm not sure exactly how it will sound in the doors, but um, it does work. The tweeter works. And the uh, the woofer works, woofer works big time. I mean, the 
it's got a little bit of base punch just sitting here, you know, on the table outside of a box. So they both work. I don't, you know, again, I don't know to what extent, but they do work. So that's that part out of the way. Let me go ahead and set up the next speaker and see how it works. Okay, there's the second speaker hooked up. Give me some power on the power station here. Pulling 0.39 amps. Power it on. So that was going to work too. Let me eject the tape and go to like a talk or something like that. That's the way our system works instead of this bureaucratic. Okay. What about some music? Hmm. I kind of get any really good. Uh, any really good reception here, but both of those speakers actually work. Now that the speakers are all repaired, um, I've got this thing hooked up. Just want to kind of test it, put it through its paces a little bit. I won't be able to use these tweeters because um, I don't have a way to plug those up. And I, I think, I think there's a crossover built into the door of the truck. I think, I can't really remember, but I think. Let's go ahead and get, now this is the aux cable that I built in the other episode. Um, and basically the operation, if you haven't watched that, the operation of this is um, we plug this into the back of the radio. This goes into the factory den location. That plug back there that I plugged into, that's a location for an optional CD changer that some of the vehicles had, and that's the interface um, that you would use for that. So, deal is, this right here would connect to your iPhone, iPod, or whatever other device you have. And as soon as you ground this, uh, this wire, then it overrides whatever is going on on the radio and switches it to that input for the most part. So um, let's see if I can find a way to get this radio propped up just a little bit here. So it's, yeah, that's better. All right, anyway, um, so let me get the power supply on. I have no wires touching each other. Everybody's happy. All right, let's go to FM, and there's a local talk station here that's really got a super strong signal. Let's be honest, at this point, boy, we're probably in a constant game where we're always going to get sold some weird virus coming through from a bunch of Okay, so obviously that's going to work. The other thing is the cassette deck. Now, you can't hear a lot of this because this is going to be copyrighted music, so I'm not going to get a strike, but... So that's good. And the deal is with the iPod. So let me go ahead and go back to, let me eject this and go back to the um, FM. So this is, uh, this is royalty free music that I own the rights to here. So I can hit play and obviously nothing's happening because I'm still on the radio. But if I ground this, if I unground it, we're back to the radio. Sounds terrible. But it's really your heart struggling to get a signal from your brain. Cool. Um, so that's where we are with this. Um, I think for now, I, I was investigating different ways of of mounting a um, like a, a headphone jack in the dash, so that whenever I plug uh, something in, you know, the some way to get it grounded, so that all I have to do is plug something in to override. But these. Uh, 
these little headphone jacks like this. While they do have some contact closures in the back, they don't work exactly the way I need them to. So probably what I'm going to end up having to do is at some point I'm going to have to do some creative soldering to make this happen. Uh, but for today, I don't need this like this. I can have a very simple, super tiny micro switch somewhere that I can just flip on and have this working. And that way I can have plenty of time to slowly work through this and make this as good as I can make it. So that's the deal. <clears throat> but for all intents and purposes, this is working uh, extremely well. This is working exactly the way that I hoped it would. And I'm pleased with it. I guess the only thing left to do now is get the thing installed in the truck. And like I said, you can watch the installation video on my primary YouTube channel, Project Time Garage. Um, and, but for now, that'll wrap up this video. Everything that I wanted is done. As usual, guys, until next time, thanks for watching.